basketball back in the 40s and 50s under Henry Island. And now a graduate of Oklahoma State, Eddie Sutton, has brought his team back to the Final Four. All right, let's go. I'll get after him. Get set up now. Look at the baseline. That's it. All right. Okay, let's get ready. Stay down, stay down. See the ball. Look at him. Face up. There he is. The Eddie Sutton Show, brought to you by Farm Fresh. Set your training table with the good things from Farm Fresh. By Coca-Cola and your local Coca-Cola bottler. Always a cowboy, always Coca-Cola. By Oklahoma Tank Lines, a proud sponsor of Oklahoma State Athletics. And by Johnson's, make a short drive, save hundreds of dollars. Johnson's Auto Family, Kingfisher, Chickasha, and Enid. Now, here's your host, Bill Teagan. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first Eddie Sutton show of the season. The last time we met, the Cowboys were at the Final Four in Seattle. Now a new season underway. Coach, the Cowboys off to a 3-1 start. Good to see you again, and uh, what do you think of the 3-1 start? Well, we'd like to be 4-0, but I think we've probably won the games we should have won, and we lost the one we probably should have lost. Uh, we were defeated by Wake Forest, and uh, the Deacons are a very good basketball team. We found that out last spring when we played them in the Meadowlands. But we had a few more soldiers then than we do at the present time, and uh, we played them in the Grade 8 uh, Festival up in uh, Detroit, and they beat us. But we beat St. Mary's. We defeated a very good Arizona State Ball Club. And you were over in Hawaii. You and Tom were over there uh, having a good time and cheering our football team on to a victory over the Rainbows. And then uh, in our re most recent game, we defeated the University of Texas at Arlington. But the team is making progress. You know, when you lose four quality players like we lost in big country and Randy Rutherford, Scott Pierce, Terry Collins. And then I think our program got a severe jolt during the summer when uh, John Nelson, our fine sophomore uh, center, decided to uh, not return. And then uh, Martin Lewis, our, our probably uh, one of our two top recruits, uh, he was uh, drafted in the NBA. And so all of a sudden we're playing with uh, a lot of new players. We're going to take a look at our, uh, our squad here in a few minutes, but I've uh, been impressed with the work habits of the team, and if they'll continue to work, we're going to be, uh, uh, I think, a very uh, respectable ball club by the time we get to the Big 8. This is the time of year when you really experiment and do a lot of things to try to find out what kind of team you're really going to have. You've talked already that the transition game may be the strongest part of your basketball team right now. I think when uh, we're able to run off our defense or off missed shots by the opponents, uh, we do have uh, some greyhounds. We have a lot of quickness up and down the, the lineup, and they do like to run. Uh, I think the biggest problem we've had though, thus far is the fact we only have nine scholarship players, and it makes for uh, difficulty in having good competition in our practice sessions. And, of course, uh, you need that in order for your team to, uh, uh, to improve and get better. But uh, I uh, think the other thing that uh, probably – uh, is going to hurt us down the line is our lack of depth maybe up front. Uh, we've got good perimeter players and I think enough, enough depth there if we all stay healthy, but we are a little thin up front. Well, it's been a great start so far. The Cowboys are three and one and we're going to meet the new Cowboys and some of the returnees when we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys off to a 3-1 start. This is our first program of the year. Coach, you have three guys who are going to be main guys back from that Final Four team to lead your squad this year? Well, we have three uh, young men, uh, starting with Andre Owens, our point guard. He's out of South Bend, Indiana, one of our two se seniors on our squad. Uh, very, very good defender, good leader, uh, good perimeter shooter, but uh, very good at uh, penetrating and, and pitching the ball to open people when he forces a help situation. Good defensive steal there by uh, Andre. And uh, I think he's probably considered the second best point guard in the, in the Big Eight behind uh, Jacques Vaughn from Kansas. And Jason Scare, another young man. Well, Jason Scare came to us. He's a sophomore. Uh, he originally, uh, I think, was from Deer Park, Texas, which is a suburb of uh, Houston. And now his parents have moved to Pasadena. But a uh, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, player who uh, is very good. And there you get a shot at Keani Roberts, uh, a junior and uh, a young man that probably is as good as an uh, athlete as we have in the Big Eight. 
Well, Keanu, when he goes to the hoop, it's hard to stop him, isn't it? It is hard to stop him. He's very, very strong in his upper body. And uh, if he can continue to improve on his shooting, he's got a chance to play basketball beyond the uh, college level because uh, he, has, he is an outstanding athlete and has good uh, basketball skills. Well, he's a powerful guy. Boy, his upper body is really strong, as you said. Well, he, he can become a complete player as he uh, learns to shoot the ball better. And there's Jason. Now, he has really developed into a pretty physical player. I mean, he was physical last year, but much stronger, making some really good judgments this year. Well, I think that uh, probably the uh, work in the uh, weight room with uh, Coach Ouster in the offseason has helped all of our ball players, but it certainly has helped Jason. Jason is our top student, too, too. Going into finals next week, I think he's got a straight four point. That's great. And uh, in his first year as a freshman, I think he was 3'9". Uh, so he's what you would look for in a student athlete, I guess, when you go recruiting. Plays a piano, too. He's a pianist. A great pianist. Yeah, he's, his mom and daddy raised him uh, very well. There's uh, Adrian Peterson, uh, who just hit that layup. One of the new guys, a freshman out of Arkansas. Freshman that doesn't play like a freshman. Uh, he didn't play as well in our last game with the University of Texas at Arlington, but up to that point he was leading our team in scoring. Plays with a lot of confidence, has a lot of poise for a youngster. Uh, outstanding shooter from the perimeter, probably uh, one of the two or three best uh, outside shooters we have on the squad. A lot of poise for a young man like that. He's from North Little Rock, Arkansas. I think we have more Arkansans on our team than we do have Oklahomans. <laughs> I think you're right. And that's not by design, but uh, because our first uh, oh, uh, responsibility in recruiting, in my opinion, is to our state. That's Here's Jerome Lambert. Jerome Lambert is a young man that led the nation in rebounding uh, two years ago when he played at Baylor. Last year he redshirted. He's had difficulty with his knee. He had uh, surgery uh, last spring and it didn't heal properly. but. Uh, he came back the other night against the University of Texas for the first time and really played uh, what I would consider almost at full, full strength. Great, great rebounder, has a great nose for the ball. I don't think he can average 14 and a half rebounds uh, for us like he did in the Southwest Conference because the Big Eight's a tougher league. But Jerome's going to be a good player. And there's Maurice Robinson, another transfer. Uh, he's from Little Rock, and his mom and daddy both want him to come to school at Oklahoma State. And, he ended up going to Florida State for a couple of years and saw the light, and now he's back here at Oklahoma <laughs> State. He redshirted last season. Big, strong player. Uh, he would remind a lot of people that have followed Big 8 basketball of uh, Richard Scott, who was the outstanding power forward for the University of Kansas a couple of years ago. He sure come alive scoring-wise the last two games for the Cowboys. Well, he had 25 points in uh, the last game with the University of Texas at Arlington, and right now leads our ball club in scoring going into uh, our, our game with SMU. Here's Dorsey, Marlon Dorsey. Marlon Dorsey started out at Mississippi State, uh, decided uh, that was not the place for him. He ended up going to junior college up in Iowa. 6'3", six, 6'4", uh, six, guard. He, too, is an outstanding shooter. Uh, I think he has great passing instincts. Uh, he can, uh, he, he's got a lot of assists. And he also is a very good rebounder for his size. And I think as he learns to play defense better, his playing time is going to be more and more. He had six assists the other night against uh, Texas San Antonio to show you his passing skills. Well, when Keontae went out, uh, we put him out on a point to rest Andre against their zone. And I, he made some very clever passes uh, inside. And there's Chad Alexander, a young man who's, he too is one of the best outside shooters on our squad. And he's had a, I, I kept teasing him, I said, I think your shot's on, uh, he's gone on vacation because he really hadn't shot the ball that well. And the other night against uh, Texas Arlington, he had his best out and he had 11 points and uh, hopefully he'll continue to improve. That's Kevin Miles from Dallas, Texas, a uh, uh, red shirt junior, 6'8", the tallest player on our squad. He's bulked up, hasn't he? He's gotten stronger and uh, Coach Dickey has worked with him individually a lot uh, in the fall and uh, also since we started practice. And he's getting better and better and he's uh, no bigger and no deeper than we are up front. And there's three red shirts, three guys that come out every day. And, and really do a good job for us, Billy Lewis and, and uh, Tommy Warner Tommy Warner and uh, Randy Stats. Those are all guys. You need all of those guys. And uh, we're going to go to a break in a moment. But first of all, recruiting. Let, let's, let's hit that okay. real quick. This had a great well, recruiting. I year. wish we had all five of these young men that we've signed right <laughs> now because they'd be playing. Uh, I've, uh, I guess this is the 26th year I've coached in Division One, And I'm not sure this isn't the best recruiting class we've ever had. Certainly one of the best that Oklahoma State's ever had. But uh, we've got the two best guards in our state, Joe Atkins and Estelle Laster. 
And then we got a young man from Texas, Desmond Mason. Uh, then two big guys, one from Springfield, Illinois. Uh, his name is Scott Robish. His dad was a great player for the University of Kansas, Dave Robish. And Alex Weber, who is probably the best player in Arkansas. So good blend. Two good guards, good swing player, two big guys. And like I said, uh, I wish we had them right now. Well, they'll be part of the Big 12. And, of course, that's coming up next year. The Cowboys are part of that great conference. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at the Big 12 conference when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. One of the most exciting things that come along in college sports in the next uh, few years, well, as a matter of fact, next year, the Big 12 Conference. Steve Hatchell is the new commissioner. The Cowboys will be an important part of that conference. And our off-the-court feature this week, Tom Dorado has a chat with the new commissioner. Thank you very much, Bill. It is indeed a pleasure to have Steve Hatchell back with us on campus here at Oklahoma State. And Steve, when we're talking Big 12 basketball, we're talking about a situation where, again, a premier conference in the nation and one that will certainly be well represented, I would imagine, when it comes to postseason tournament play. Well, I think, you know, this is the one area uh, when you want to talk about if you, if you need to take a sport and move it up ahead of all the rest and say, you know, what's a real marquee? I mean, I think men's basketball, for the most part, in the Big 12 is uh, absolutely terrific. You look at the number of teams that have been in the NCAA tournament, uh, the great players, um, you know, just reflecting on Big 8 history and going back like I... Uh, am able to do. Big 8 basketball was good for a long period of time. It just didn't get the recognition. Now there's even better coaches in it. And the facilities are really first class. Uh, you look at Eddie Sutton coming to Oklahoma State, um, you're talking about great success. You're talking about a great coach that uh, now comes into a situation that where you say there's no weaknesses in this league. Uh, everything about it is right. The sport gets the emphasis that it needs. And uh, uh, I think that when you're talking about basketball, uh, you need to include the Big 12 uh, in every way possible when you're talking about great basketball in the entire country. Scheduling, realignment was difficult at best. More games, more teams, uh, a little more difficult than perhaps football was uh, back in the fall. But rivalries were intact when everything was said and done, and new ones were created. That's the best of both worlds. Exactly. When you have 12 teams, keep in mind that these teams are now of such marquee value both the teams and the coaches at most places. It's not just Oklahoma State and its history. You now got Eddie Sutton coaching there. You can do this at each institution. And what happens there is that television says, we want these great matchups. So that means that you can't just go up and down and say you're going to have a complete double round robin of 12 teams because there goes your entire schedule. You want the Big 12 to play the North Carolinas, uh, the UCLA's, uh, all of the good programs in the country because it's good for television, it's good for the conference. Uh, but that makes the scheduling a little bit more difficult. And, uh, but I, again, I think that a, a tough situation came out as a real positive for this conference. And uh, I think people will like what they see when they look at the divisions in basketball and see what happens with uh, the mechanics that will transpire in, in all of the scheduling in basketball. Big 12 basketball championship game. What a hot item that has been. Uh, and the site, where are we there? Well, the athletic directors and uh, presidents have voted that the first two years for the basketball tournament will be in Kansas City. There's an added twist to it too, and that the women's basketball tournament will be in Kansas City as well. The men will be in Kemper, and uh, the women will be in Municipal Auditorium, both of which are about to receive uh, multi-million dollar facelifts, adding more seats to Kemper and fixing up Municipal uh, to the point where it's a very much a state-of-the-art facility that will seat approximately 10,500 people. Both tournaments uh, easily the men's will be sold out. It will be a tough ticket. The women's tournament, when you look at the teams that will be participating in that, will be arguably the very best women's conference in the country. That will be sold out. There will be a lot of television. Uh, we have title sponsors lined up for both. Um, I think this will be the very best in basketball uh, that you can have for any conference in the country. You're talking about a major revenue producer on the Division I level, the sport of basketball. How much bigger can it get? It seems to grow with each year. I'm not sure we know what that boundary is. Uh, I think that uh, the NCAA has done a marvelous job with the tournament. I see that expanding and growing uh, in its point of emphasis. Uh, the sport of basketball, Tom, is just its exploding in terms of its popularity. Women's basketball is, uh, is, is growing in leaps and bounds, uh, not only in participants, but in the skill of the players and in the uh, backing and the following of the fans. Uh, I don't know that we know an end point yet. I don't know that we've reached that. And uh, that's the fun part of it is that the promise of the future is unknown, but it's an exciting future and one that I think we can all anticipate with a lot of excitement. 
good to see you. We appreciate you joining us here on the Eddie Sutton Show. Steve Hatchell, the Big 12 Commissioner. Now we'll throw it back to the studio and Bill and Eddie. You know, uh, Bill, uh, I've known Steve Hatchell for a long time, and we are really fortunate to get him as our new commissioner. I think Carl James has done a great job in the Big 8, and of course Steve has been the commissioner of the Southwest Conference the last few years, but he has a, a tremendous background, and I think that uh, he'll lead us uh, uh, the Big 12, and I made this uh, comment several times. I think the Big 12, in a very short period of time, is going to be considered the top league in America, not uh, maybe in men's basketball. It's going to be one of the best. But when you take women's basketball, you take football, those great matchups, you take baseball, uh, golf, tennis, uh, it's just going to be a tremendous league. And, you know, I know some of my uh, coaches in the Big Eight were leery about. Uh, uh, bringing in those four schools in basketball, but I've, I've coached against some of those guys, and of course uh, James Dickey was my assistant for eight years, who now coaches Texas Tech, and I think the University of Oklahoma found out that uh, they're not a pushover because they went down and beat them in Norman, and I, th and I think they realized that they're good. Texas, A&M, Baylor, they're all good. So it's going to be a tremendous league, and, and somebody asked me also, how's that going to work? Well, there's going to be two divisions, and we will play round robin with the University of Oklahoma, Texas, Texas A&M, Baylor, and Texas Tech, and then we will play the other six schools one time. Uh, the only disappointment there is the University of Kansas. We won't get them twice every year because that's been such a great rivalry, but uh, that means we'll have 16 conference games instead of 14 as we now have them. Well, it's certainly an exciting time, and that's all coming up next year. When we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show, we'll take a look at what's ahead for the Cowboys. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Up next for the Cowboys, the Mustangs of SMU. You're not on, on the road a lot this year, Coach, but uh, this time you're in Dallas. We haven't won a, a game on the road either, and that's uh, always a, a big thing to, to win that first road game because it's much different playing in Moody Coliseum than it has been playing in the Gallagher Ive Arena. And we've had some great games with SMU. And it's a very good series, and of course, we probably uh, have as many alums in that area outside of the state of Oklahoma as we do anywhere in the United States. So we'll have a lot of people there cheering for us. I know when we played down there a couple years ago, we had just about as many fans as, uh, as the Ponies did. But they're a good ball club, got a new coach. They're 2-2, two and two, should be 3-1. and one. They had my old school Creighton down, I think, 14 points with seven minutes to go at home and couldn't hit free throws and lost the game by four points. And we played Arizona State the other night in a terrific game. They went home to play New Mexico. They're up 10 points with a minute 10 to go and missed nine straight oh, free throws. Man. And boy, have we had problems with free throws. You know, we played four games. We've had uh, our field goal percentage be higher than our free throw percentage in all four games, and that's unheard of. And uh, I don't know, we've, uh, we shoot them well in practice, but when it comes to game time, well, we've had a lot of uh, bricks thrown up there. And, you know, you can't win close games and good against good competition unless you can hit those free pitches. So that's an area that we've got to improve. Well, again, the Cowboys are 3-1. and one. Let's take a look at some of the standings and how the Big 8 uh, season has unfolded so far. Coach, any big surprises? Well, Nebraska you? has really played well. They've got a new player, a little point guard, and uh, he's throwing that ball to Strickland and Boone on the wings. And they beat uh, Minnesota. They beat the University of Oregon. They had some very impressive wins. And I really believe that they will be a strong contender for uh, second place in the Big 8. I don't think anybody can beat Kansas. Uh, Iowa State's a little bit of a surprise because they lost a lot of, uh, lot of players. Oklahoma is a surprise, but they play tough competition. Believe me, they're a lot better than their 1-3 record. Best teams in our league, uh, in my opinion, what I've seen is uh, Kansas is number one in the country, and deservedly so. Uh, Missouri, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and then uh, I think the other four teams are in there somewhere. But Colorado has a, a great uh, young player that uh, will make them, a content or make them uh, more competitive than what they have been. Uh Let's talk about your ball club, a couple of guys. Keontae Roberts injured his ankle the other night. What's his status? Keontae Roberts will not be with us uh, when we play SMU. Uh, he has what they call a uh, second-degree sprain. I don't know what that means, but he's on crutches. Uh, we hope to have him back uh, by the time we play Michigan State a week from uh, Monday. And uh, at the time he hurt it in the game, we didn't think it was that serious, but uh, it certainly turned out to be, and we're going to – going to miss him because he's one of our top players. Of course, we've got the addition of R.W. McCorders coming in. Uh, he had such a great football season, and he got back from Hawaii, and I think he had a little bit of the jet lag, plus he really got beat up a little bit this year. 
So we let him off this last week, but he's going to be joining us, and he'll be a welcome addition. What's he add to the ball club? Well, I think he uh, adds just a, a quality basketball player. Uh, last year, uh, we felt like he was the best player coming out of, uh, of uh, Oklahoma high school basketball. Uh, Nate Harris, his high school coach, told me, he said, you've had a lot of great guards, but this guy's going to surprise you. Uh, he's a fierce competitor, and he'll give us some backup help, I think, at the point guard position where we can rest uh, Andre Owens. Well, that's great. We all look forward to seeing him. And, again, the Cowboys taking on SMU. That's coming up on Saturday, then some time off for finals, and then they get right into the schedule. Coach, good to see you again. For Coach Sutton, I'm Bill Tig, and see you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show.